two, one. Let's see what happens. What do you think is gonna happen? Leave down in the comment section below what do you think is gonna happen when I press this play button. Hi everyone, Rifaz here. Welcome back to the next episode of Artificial Intelligence. As you know, I'm a condensed matter researcher at the Morales Group at City College, and today I'm gonna to show you how to create your own neural network. Now you can use this to create your own projects, make an app, make a game, anything you want. I've been learning how to create artificially intelligent programs over the last few weeks, and it's very interesting. So I wanna share that knowledge with you, and maybe you can even create something that ends up helping our own society. So let's go ahead, get started. We're gonna go ahead, program it in Python and JavaScript. Let's check it out. Okay, so our neural network has three parts. For the first part, we're going to generate training data. That's what we're gonna do in this video. In the second part, we're going to train our neural network using that training data. And finally, in the last video, the penultimate success is when we put our neural network to use and we classify an image or a graph using our network. Let's check it out. All right, so how do you generate training data? Well, it takes six steps. Here they are. First thing you gotta do is import the libraries you need. In this case, some of the libraries we need are uh, it basically helps you draw graphs in Python. Why draw graphs? Well, our task in this neural network example is to classify certain graphs into certain categories. So, for example, if you're given three kinds of graphs, the machine has to classify each graph into its appropriate category. This one, the machine can call it linear. This one, the machine can call it quick, sinusoidal. Okay, so these are just three kinds of graphs. We'll be generating training data for them, and then the machine should be able to classify them. Okay, so that's the first step. You import the required libraries. What's step two? We gotta set a domain. So how do you create a domain in Python? Well, it's as easy as create a linearly spaced group of points between zero and 10, and create 100 of those 100 such points. Okay, so that's the domain of our graph from 0 to 10. Pretty pretty straightforward. Next step. Okay, time out. You're probably bored at this point. Why? Well, I'm blabbering on, but this is where the neural network magic happens, okay? We're creating the training data and you need to understand how the code actually works. So before we get to programming anything, this is the part that's critical to know. So get out your pens, get out your notebooks and take notes because things are about to get real messy. What parameters are we talking about in this case? Y equals E. To so that's the equation we're dealing with. And as you can see, we've got two parameters, A and omega. So we're gonna randomly generate those parameters as such. Okay, so after we set the parameters, what do we do? Well, we're gonna define a function that's gonna give us the graph, right? So, okay, so how do we define the function? That's gonna be, times t. Okay, so that's your function. And now we're gonna plot everything out, right? So, uh, and that's pretty much it. The last step, this was the fifth step. Uh, the last step, the sixth step, is to go ahead and download what you just drew. It's gonna save your image, your plot, to your local hard drive. Okay, now we covered the architecture, we're ready for the code. Let's check it out. Go collab. Type collab into Google, click on the first link, and this is what you'll probably see if you're logged into Google and click new notebook. And now what are we gonna do? We're gonna basically make a new Python program. So go ahead and go over here. I'm gonna name this generating training data tutorial, uh, Barry Science Lab. Okay, so what's the first thing we gotta do? Import the libraries you need. So I always forget what libraries I need. So I just checked the blackboard. Um, I have to import NumPy, not SciPy, SciPy is later. NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. So let's do that. Matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. So whenever you see this uh, check mark over here, this green check mark, that means you're all set, you're ready to go. Okay, so what's up next? Now we gotta set the domain for our graph. So I'm gonna write t, and I'm using t, not x, because this is a time series graph meaning my independent variable is time. T is lin space, meaning a linearly spaced set of points from zero to 10 and make a hundred of those. Okay, now what's up? 
Well, after I've got my domain, I gotta set my parameters, right? So I got two parameters, remember A and W, and why do I have two parameters? Well, my function is what? It's an exponential function times a sinusoidal. So in my sine, I have omega times t. In my exponential, I have e times t. What is a and t? I haven't defined those yet. Well, I am gonna. I'm gonna define those as random variables, uh, uniformly random variables. And a I'll define from 0 to 2.2, .2, omega from 0 to 5.5. Okay, that's all good and ready to go. Uh, now, if you want to just verify things are working, just go ahead, print out A, and lin space is not defined. Oh, I should have put np dot. Okay, so np dot, you need it in Python uh, whenever you're referencing a function or method from a library. Okay, good. So now what we're going to do is set up our figure. So I'm going to write fig is equal to uh, figure, right? Is that how you do it? No. Fig is equal to what? Uh, plt dot figure is that how you do it okay there we go good sometimes I forget so fig is equal to plt dot figure so we created our figure but where is it well now you gotta say um, plt dot plot t comma y comma row okay so now what did that do that created my graph um, with t as my x-axis my independent variable y as my y-axis my dependent variable and row just means I'm doing points uh, if I want to do lines instead, I can do this. Looks amazing. If you want to turn off those grid lines because we're just feeding this as an image, not a graph, to a convolutional neural net, you can just do um, what do you do again? Yeah, you do plt dot axes off. I think that's how you do it. And fig. Okay, so now fig dot axes off isn't working. Um, I'm not sure why. So maybe figure.axis, no, fig.axis maybe. Okay, so maybe figure, maybe figure. Okay, plt.axis. Okay, wow. So I tried a lot of different things. Finally, the last one worked. Um, now the last thing I wanna do before I feed this image into a CNN is I wanna make the image smaller. How do I make something smaller in Python? Um, well, there's a little method you can call uh, called set size, set size inches. I believe it's called that. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna work, but basically you put in the width you want and the height you want for your plot, and hopefully it will work. Fingers crossed. Uh, okay, matplotlib has no. Let's see, fig set size. Okay, yeah. So instead of writing plt, I have to write fig uh, dot set size. So you can see my image is a lot smaller. Now I'm basically ready. The last step I gotta do, let me just put this here, organize my code. The last step I gotta do is download this image into my local uh, file, so into my local hard drive. So I gotta write uh, fig save, something like that, or plt.savefig. And I'm gonna save it in a file. So I'm gonna create a file here, new folder, um, testing, Oh no, graph image. Okay, so I'm gonna save the file under graph image and let's give the file a name, maybe uh, plot.png. Oh no, what should we call it? Linear.png. Linear sign. And now you can see, hopefully, it's gonna be in here as soon as I refresh. There it is. If I go ahead and open this, download this file boom that's the file we were looking for you see so now what are we gonna do what are we gonna do now well now we have one training image we can't use just one we gotta have a lot in fact usually you gotta have hundreds thousands of training images so how are we gonna do this well you can just use a for loop for i in range 0 to a thousand so this is gonna generate 999 images right or a thousand a thousand because you start at zero and you go all the way up to a thousand, so your images are gonna be listed from zero all the way to 999, because remember, it doesn't count up to a thousand. So let's go ahead and put all of that over here. And we gotta change up the name. If all of the files have the same name, we can't possibly navigate them. So let's see, we're gonna call it I. 
So what does this do? It just gives the file a name based on what number graph it is. That's it. Um, so this should be all good to go, ready to go. Let me just delete this file that we had from before. Um, anything else that I have to change? I don't think so. All right, folks, we're gonna hit enter. We're gonna click the play button in three, two, one. Let's see what happens. What do you think is gonna happen? Leave down in the comment section below what do you think is gonna happen when I press this play button? Oh my God. See, my hands are not on the keyboard now, so I am doing nothing. It's all the machine now, all the machine. So let's see what happens. Um, you can see that it says runtime warning, more than 20 figures have been opened. Of course, we're generating 999, almost, we're generating a thousand training examples. So it makes sense and you can see right here I've got I've got example after example let me make these bigger oh wow that's a lot of training examples so the computer is generating hundreds of training examples and this is gonna serve as linear sinusoidal training for my CNN later on so this should be done in a matter of seconds now and you can see right here it took the computer 47 seconds to finish this process. All right, folks, we've created 1,000 training examples for our neural network. Uh, that's how you build the training set. And in the next episode, we'll check out how we can train our neural network using this training set. And I'm just scrolling all the way back up to our code. All right, folks, so if you want this code, if you want to try this out on your own, leave some comments below. Uh, we'll help you out. Good luck. Folks, if you've watched this far out into the video, I just want to say thank you for learning how to create your own training network, uh, training data for a neural network. Right now I'm riding my bike and this probably isn't safe, but uh, if you want to learn more about artificial intelligence and neural networks and deep learning and all of that, I encourage you to go out to our sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant has amazing courses on machine learning, uh, data and science, artificial intelligence and all of that. You can go ahead and go to Brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab for 20% off the annual membership. So with that, you get a lot of interactive exercises, you get free problem sets, amazing stuff like that. Now, uh, I gotta look on both sides of the road. And hope Ambition plus MKO plus scaffolding really? equals learning. Me. We believe anyone can learn Excuse anything. Me, that's why our motto is Ooh. memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. The first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become, become the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.